Hello, everybody. I am Ilahi Karimova, an associate professor of pathological anatomy department of Azerbaijan Medical University. The term of the third lecture is respiratory system diseases. The lower respiratory tract is also called the trachea bronchial tree and includes the following parts trachea, main bronchus, lobar bronchus, segmental bronchus, subsegmental bronchus, contacting bronchial, terminal bronchial, respiratory bronchial, then alveolar duct, alveolar sac, and alveolus. The respiratory tract can also be divided into a conducting zone and a respiratory zone. The respiratory zone includes the respiratory bronchioles, alveolar ducts, and alveoli, and is the site of oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange. The lungs are the largest organs in the lower respiratory tract. The lungs are suspended within the pleural cavity of the thorax. The two membranes of pleura surround the lungs. The visceral pleura, this is inner layer, cover the lungs and the outer layer, parietal uh, pleura, lines the inner surface of the chest wall. The lungs are divided into different lobes. The right lung is larger in size than the left and has the three lobes, upper, middle and lower. And the left lung has two lobes, upper and lower or superior and inferior lobes. The morphofunctional unit of the lung is the sinus. Pulmonary sinus is commonly defined as the portion of lung distal to the terminal bronchial and supplied by first order respiratory bronchioles. Asinus include, include the respiratory bronchioles, alveolar ducts and alveolar sacs. The alveoli uh, are rich with alveolar capillaries where gas exchange takes place. The respiratory bronchioles and the alveolar ducts are responsible for 10% of the gas exchange. The alveoli are responsible for the other 90%. The mean number of alveoli in human lung is uh, 480 million. The respiratory tract is covered in epithelium, which varies down the tract. Most of the epithelium from the nose, teal, bronchi, uh, bronchioli is covered in ciliated uh, columnar epithelium. It is respiratory epithelium. You see in the picture um, in the upper corner. The cilia beat in one direction, uh, moving mucus towards uh, the throat. Moving down the bronchioles, the cells get more cuboidal in shape, and in alveoli, uh, the epithelium becomes flat. In the development of respiratory tract disease, different factors may play a role, as morphofunctional peculiarity of lungs, immunological state of organism, local defense mechanisms, smoking, alcohol abuse, age, emotional stresses, trauma, etc. Lung diseases can be divided into the following groups. The matter diseases, tumors, allergic diseases, sclerotic diseases, pleurisy, professional diseases. Infective factors may invade lung tissue by the following way. A droplet way, it is by respiration. This is common way. Aspiration, inhalation of food, vomiting mass or infected material from the mouth or pharynx. Hematogenic way, by blood circulation and contact way from adjacent tissue. Acute bronchitis. This is an inflammation of the large and medium bronchi. Acute bronchitis occur in all age groups. It may manifest as primary disease or secondarily accompanied to their other pathological conditions as complication. Etiology. Mainly, it is the biological factors, bacteria, viruses, immune complexes, etc. Its main complication of influenza and uh, measles. But physical and chemical factors 
also operative. Pay attention to the macroscopical appearances of the acute bronchitis. The airway mucosa is uh, red and edematous with overlying mucoid prolonged exudate. According to character of inflammatory exudate, there are the following types of acute bronchitis. Catheral acute bronchitis may be serous, purulent, mucinous, or mixed. Fibrinose acute bronchitis. Due to one layered epithelium, this is cruposal inflammation. Fibrinose hemorrhagic acute bronchitis. Necrotic acute bronchitis or declamative. Ulcerative acute bronchitis or disruptive necrotic. Microscopically, bronchial wall is thickened. Mucosa is reddish and edematous. Goblet cells, mucose, and the serous gland in the walls of the bronchi provide abundant mucoid secretion. Mucopurulent exudate in bronchial lumen contains polymorph leukocytes, bacteria, desquamated epithelial cells, and mucus, and vessels are congested. The condition is usually mild, and spread to bronchioles in healthy adults is unusual due to the effective ciliary action of the bronchial epithelium. However, in children and debilitated people, spread to the bronchioles may occur, bronchiolitis and bronchopneumonia results. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, defined in functional terms as a chronic, slowly progressive disorder characterized by airways obstruction that doesn't change over several months. Damage from COPD is usually permanent and irreversible. It causes um, dyspnea and is associated with chronic coughing. Uh, chronic bronchitis and emphysema are, are the two main COPD disorders. Chronic bronchitis is a clinically defined entity characterized by a productive cough for at least three consecutive months in at least two consecutive years. The condition most frequently occurs primarily due to prolonged action of pathogenic factors of low intensity on the respiratory tract but also may follow acute bronchitis. It is more common among men. Due to character of inflammatory process, there are two types of chronic bronchitis. Exudative chronic bronchitis, the mark increasing glandular tissue, hyperplasia and hypertrophy of goblet cells, mucous glands, lead to production of viscid sputum, raise an infiltration of lymphocytes and plasma cells. The essential feature is a change in the epithelial structure of the bronchus. Continued chronic irritation may result in squamous metaplasia of the bronchial epithelium, and the retention of the secretion encourages bacterial growth. An increasing of exudative uh, reaction leads to productive cough, with a releasing of large amount of sputum. Proliferative chronic bronchitis. Proliferative processes prevail. The mucosal surface is infiltrated by lympholeukocytic cells and granulation tissue develops. This process may lead to formation of the inflammatory polypi, which is protruded into the lumen, causing narrowing and even obstruction. Chronic polypose bronchitis develops. An exudative reaction is uh, reduced. Therefore, a scanty sputum is released, which clinically manifested by dry cough. This slide illustrated for you the pathogenic mechanism of chronic exudative bronchitis. Pay attention to the microscopical appearances of the exudative chronic bronchitis. You see in the bronchial lumen plugging mucin. Uh, this is sputum. And pay attention, the bronchial bulk is thickened, edematous, congested. You see the congested vessels. Then you see the metaplasia, the squamous metaplasia of the epithelia. There is no cilia. And pay attention to the hyperplasia of mucus secreting glands. In this slide, you see the 
interrelated pathogenic factors which are set up a virtual circle. As a result of the chronic process, in the adjacent lung tissue, emphysema, atelectasis, pneumonia, and pneumosclerosis may occur. Atelectasis is a shrinkage of the lung, and in, you can see this in X-ray image. Bronchiectasis means a permanent dilation of one or more bronchi. Bronchiectasis may be congenital or acquired. Congenital bronchiectasis may complicate maldevelopment of part of the lung or followed acute purulent infections complicating uh, fibrocystic diseases. Here is the pathogenic mechanism of acquired bronchiectasis. Most cases are initiated by recurrent inflammation, uh, it is by bronchitis or bronchopneumonia, uh, which fails to resolve and occurs due to weakness of bronchial wall. Coughing impulses causes a dilation of bronchial lumen with protrusion, which becomes irreversible and remains permanent. Two main anatomical variants of bronchiectasis are described, cylindrical and circular. Cylindrical bronchiectasis is almost always uh, affects the small bronchi and found in the lower lobes. The bronchi are grossly dilated throughout their length. A interrunning lung tissue is non-functioning and much of it is fibrosed. In Secular bronchiectasis dilation tend to be more localized, exaggerated, and usually contain pus. They are uh, rounded, may be single or multiple, and occur in large and uh, medium-sized bronchi. Sometimes they are associated with bronchial obstruction due to tumor, enlarged glands, or firing body. In children, Due to the anatomical structure of bronchial tree, fusive form uh, variation of bronchiectasis may be found. Such bronchi are spindle-shaped. A large amount of dilated air passage in lungs giving rise to a honeycomb phenomenon by naked eye. Pay attention to the microscopic slide. There is a production of lymphoid aggregation in the bronchial wall, and bronchial mucosa raised in folds. Uh, pay attention that mucosa undergoes squamous metaplasia. And in the lumen, you see the retention of secretion. D4, there is the foul smell due to the large quantities of secretion containing putrefactive bacteria. You can see a large amount of congested vessel in the bronchial wall. Where is clinical morphological change of lung tissue and other organs which may be concomitant to bronchiectasis are defined as bronchiectatic disease, which exhibits the following effects. A foul smell. I explained to you this phenomenon in previous slide. Local separative complications also is common. Lung abscesses, bronchopleural fistula, empyema. Pyemia giving rise to brain abscesses or meningitis. Pulmonary hypertension ensues, causes hypertrophy of uh, right ventricle, and corpulmonary develops, and right ventricle failure occurs. Cyanosis and clapping fingers may occur as manifestation of general hypoxia. Development of amyloid disease may occur, uh, you know, in chronic processes, uh, prolonged destructive processes. Uh, amyloid may occur, especially in kidney. Amyloid protein accumulates around the glomerular capillaries and tubular membranes, and patients may die uh, due to renal failure. Emphysema is characterized by a permanent increase in the size of air spaces distal to the terminal bronchial, with destructive change in the uh, walls between the air sacs. Such air sacs are unable to ensure adequate uh, oxygen supply to the body. At a gross examination, chest is barrel shaped with prominent sternoclavicular muscles, shoulders held high, 
ribs almost horizontal, liver dullness reduced on percussion. In this slide, he compared the normal lung tissue with emphysematose. You see that alveoli and alveolar duct distended, alveolar walls stretched and become thin and ruptured. According to etiopathogenesis, the following types of emphysema are described. Chronic diffuse obstructive emphysema, chronic focal emphysema, idiopathic emphysema, compensatory emphysema, senile emphysema, and interstitial emphysema. Chronic diffuse obstructive emphysema, the basic cause uh, chronic bronchitis and hereditary deficiency of alpha-1 antitrypsin. Another mechanism of chronic diffuse obstructive emphysema is mucus plaque forming in the lumen of bronchioles, preventing exhalation and an excess of air is uh, retained in alveoli. Chronic focal emphysema. This type is usually found around of old pathological and scarred lesions. Otherwise, may be called as perifocal emphysema or irregular emphysema. If such emphysematose focuses colus, they can form multiple big bulla with a thin wall and a bullous emphysema develops, rupture of which may lead to uh, pneumothorax and death. Idiopathic emphysema. Coexistence of interstitial fibrosis and emphysema of unknown causes. Vessels are obliterated, alveolar receptor become atrophied and ruptured. Compensatory emphysema, this is vicarious emphysema, is follow surgical section or damage of part of pulmonary tissue or whole lung. The surrounding healthy lung tissue undergoes to hypertrophy and emphysema ensues. Senile or atrophic emphysema, this condition occurs in old age due to involution of lung tissue and alveolar receptor. The lungs are not enlarged and in section such alveoli subside. Interstitial emphysema, air may penetrate into the connective tissue framework surrounding the secondary labels of the lung due to overdistension of alveoli in whooping cough, bronchiolitis, uh, trauma penetrating and crush injuries of the chest wall and so on. It may travel along the septa to the pleura. If a large amount of air penetrates the tissue, it can spread via tissue spaces to the uh, mediastinum and to the subcutaneous region of the neck and face. Section of the lung can reveal two separate patterns, alveolar or panasanar and central lobular emphysema. In central lobular or central asanar emphysema, there is no enlargement of the lung and the condition tends to be most marked in the upper lobes. A characteristic pattern is only obvious in cross section of the lungs with distended central air channels. The functional change in central lobular emphysema are much more serious and cause uh, increasing disability. The alveolar tissue is normal, there is no increase in lung capacity and therefore no compensatory mechanisms. Poor oxygenation results in cyanosis and severe dyspnea Chronic hypoxia always leads to pulmonary hypertension and right ventricular failure. Core pulmonale uh, ensues. Panasonar emphysema produces the anatomical change characteristically associated with general distension of lung parenchym. In individuals with a hereditary deficiency of alpha-1 antitrypsin, alveolar or panasonar emphysema, is common. Deficiency of alpha-1 antitrypsin makes proteolysis unopposed, thus pulmonary elastica might destroy it, leading to permanent dis uh, destruction of alveoli. In uh, panacenor emphysema, the effects on gas interchange are offset 
by the structural and functional compensatory uh, adaptations. The patient has a normal color, but dyspnea appears. On this slide, you can compare the central lobular and panacenar emphysema. In central acenar emphysema, you see dilation of the respiratory bronchial. In panacenar emphysema, dilation who acenus. At autopsy, the lungs are voluminous and pale, contain little blood. Edge of lung are rounded. Uh, there are impressions of ribs on lung surface. Bulla may be formed at the periphery. Areas of lung between affected portions are often dark, congested, and depressed. Heart covered by lungs. Lung tissue is cut with crackle. Pay attention to the microscopic slide in the right. Alveoli and alveolar ducts distended. Alveolar walls stretched and become thin and ruptured. The capillaries are stretched, thinned, and become empty. Thus, blood supply is reduced. Chronic hypoxia always leads to pulmonary hypertension, right ventricular failure. At the left, you see core pulmonale or core quadratum. Pneumonia is an inflammatory process involving the specialized tissue, respiratory part of the lungs, which include parenchyma of lung, it is alveoli, stroma of lung, it is alveolar septa, peribranchial, and perivascular spaces. Inflammation of parenchyma of lung is defined as pneumonia. Involvement of stroma is called interstitial pneumonia or pneumonitis. Pneumonia is classified according to our different principles. According to clinical and morphological appearances, pneumonias may be subdivided into parenchymatose pneumonias and stromal pneumonias. Parenchymatose pneumonias, which include lobar pneumonia and bronchopneumonia. Stromal pneumonias, otherwise, are called interstitial pneumonia. According to a cross of disease, Two main types exist, acute and chronic pneumonia. Recently, the term chronic pneumonia not used. Due to nosological factors, pneumonia may be primary and secondary. One classification system divides pneumonia into community acquired, uh, pneumonia contracted outside of a health care institution, and hospital acquired, acquired in a hospital or other long-term health care facility. Bronchopneumonia is the commonest form of pneumonias. Bronchopneumonia is primarily uh, an extensive inflammation of the terminal bronchioles and their related alveoli. The lesions initially involve one uh, or more lobules. Therefore, uh, the, another name is focal uh, pneumonia, as you see in the picture at the right. Bronchopneumonia is polyethological disease, usually occurs in all age groups, especially in infancy and old age. Uh, disease starts as a bronchiolitis, usually in the lower lobes, especially in second, sixth, eighth, ninth, and tenth segments. Bronchopneumonia may be caused by exogenic and endogenic factors. Exogenic factors include microorganisms, dusty particles, irradiations, pollutions, etc. Endogenic factors may be sepsis, uremia, intoxication, metabolic disturbances, etc. All these pathogenic factors can be divided into three groups, chemical, physical, and infective factors. Infective agents are the frequent. Many different pathogens can cause uh, pneumonia, including bacteria, viruses, fungi, mycoplasma, and protozoa. Bacteria are the most common cause in adults, and Streptococcus pneumonia is the commonest among them. Classification. According to pathogenesis, bronchopneumonia may be primary and secondary. Secondary pneumonia occurs as opportunistic infections 
in state of debilitation or an allergical deficiency. Due to clinical course, bronchopneumonia may be acute, subacute, and long-term. According to size of involved area of lung tissue, there may be acinose, miliar, lobular, subsegmental, segmental, polysegmental pneumonias. Hospital-acquired or nasocomial pneumonias tends to be more uh, serious because defense mechanisms against infection are often impaired and uh, kinds of infecting organisms are more dangerous than those generally encountered in the community. Risk factors predisposing people to hospital-acquired pneumonias are uh, different. For example, aspiration. This is uh, due to inhalation of food or infected material from the mouth or pharynx, uh, which may occur when patients are unconscious, for example, uh, during anesthesia or in coma due to the epilepsy or cerebrovascular disease. It may also complicate any condition associated with frequent vomiting, for example, hiatus hernia, pyloric stenosis, or esophageal obstruction. Immune suppression from medications or disease, recent illness, hypostatic conditions, congestion in lungs due to prolonged bed rest, and so on. The disease starts as a bronchitis. Bronchial walls are congested, hyperemic, and edematous. There is an exudate containing lympholeukocytic infiltration, discomative uh, bronchial epithelium, and infection organisms in bronchial lumen. After the uh, initial bronchiolitis, inflammatory process may spread to alveolar tissue, intrabronchially or peribronchially. Pay attention to this. Uh, micro, micro preparation. This is destructive bronchitis, and you see that epithelium is destroyed, and um, immigration of polymorphs through destroyed wall to the adjacent alveolar tissue. In addition to common features, bronchopneumonia has different morphological manifestations according to character of a causal agent. Streptococcal pneumonia, pneumococci, are the common feature uh, of the uh, pneumonia. Uh, this uh, form is usually secondary to uh, viral infections and is rapidly fatal. Uh, microscopically, in bronchi and alveoli, there are neutrophilic infiltration, edema, fibrinose exudate, and numerous streptococcal colonia. Lymphatics are congested, purulent uh, lymphangitis also occur. Staphylococcal uh, bronchopneumonia in patient uh, receiving long-term antibiotic therapy and in patient during epidemics of influenza, measles, and whooping cough, staphylococcus aureus may be um, superadded and cause bronchopneumonia usually occurs in debilitating patients with immune deficiency. The exudate is purulent with numerous polymorphs and microorganisms. At the center, there is necrotic area with a staphylococcal mixture, uh, which is surrounded by serous hemorrhagic exudative zone. The condition is often rapidly fatal, but survival is associated with abscess formation, empyema, and pneumothorax. Viral pneumonia usually occurs in viral infections of upper respiratory tract, flu, adenovirus infections, measles, etc. The most common viral infection is influenza. A microscopical change, the hyal inflammation, swelling of interstitium, uh, intense mononuclear reaction and loss of epithelium, edema, uh, fluid, and large numbers of red cells. Due to cytopathic effect of viruses, the bronchial epithelium is usually destroyed 
and uh, superadding of secondary bacterial infections, especially staphylococcal and streptococcal infections occur. Fungi usually affect uh, the lung due to the long-term antibiotic therapy and in debilitated patients. Complications Death is common since the pneumonia commonly complicates debilitating diseases, for example, hypostatic pneumonia, especially of elderly persons and infants. Lung fibrosis occur because resolution is often incomplete. Many consolidated uh, parts uh, end in fibrosis. If the uh, resulting fibrosis is gross, the lung uh, structure may be distorted uh, with bronchial deformation and bronchiectasis is formed. The condition encourages reinfection, causing repeated bronchopneumonia. Superative chains, lung abscess and the empyema occur in debilitated patients and especially in cases of uh, aspiration pneumonia. Other complications we will discuss in the following uh, slides. Lower pneumonia. As the name suggests, in this condition, a complete lobe or even two lobes of a lung can be affected. The most striking change occurs in the alveolar tissue. Alveolar ducts are filled with uh, fibrinose, it is crupose exudate, therefore the another name is crupose pneumonia. At the uh, overlying pleura is involved. Uh, this is also called nupleura pneumonia. The bronchioles and bronchi not involved. The disease is usually happen uh, suddenly in initially healthy adult males between 30 and 50 years. Occurrence in children is very rare condition. The causal factor of disease is streptococcus pneumonia or uh, pneumococcus. This is gram-positive diplococcus. Less common lobar pneumonia is caused by gram-negative Friedlander's bacillus or Klebsiella. Four phases are recognized in development of lobar pneumonia. Congestion, red hepatization, gray hepatization, and resolution. Congestion stage, the onset is sudden with fever and rigors. Uh, macroscopically, the lobe of lung shows the usual early change of acute inflammation. It is a dark red and frothy, blood-stained fluid can be squeezed from it. Microscopically, the alveolar capillaries are dilated, congested with increasing permeability, leading to plasmoragia. Alveolar septa and uh, the spaces filled with uh, serous exudate containing polymorphs, large number of bacteria. Alveoli uh, are airless, exudate immediately, extend throughout of the lobe by alveolar pores. Lymph vessels are also congested. Red hepatization. The lobe is enlarged, solid, red and granular. It contains no air, resemble liver tissue. Look at the macroscopic preparation here. Some fibrin is present on the pleural surface. Lymph nodes are also enlarged. Pay attention to microscopic slide. Microscopically, there is a well-marked exudate with network of fibrinous strands. Diapodesis of erythrocytes occurs with uh, accumulation of uh, ladder in alveoli. You will see there accumulation of erythrocytes inside of the alveolar spaces. Large numbers of uh, pneumococci and polymorph leukocytes are also present in the exudate. Clinically, there is pain on breathing due to the pleural exudate and the productive cough with brown sputum. Gray hepatization. The affected lobe is even more solid and both parietal and visceral pleural surfaces are covered by a confluent fibrinose exudate, thus fibrinose pleuricity develops. The cut surface is dry, granular and of grayish-white color. Healer uh, lymph nodes 
show evidence of lymphadenitis. Microscopically, the alveolar exudate is increased in amount with dent fibrin strands, very numerous polymorphs and monocytes, which are uh, converted into macrophages. Erythrocytes undergo to hemolysis, leading to hemosiderin formation, which ingested by macrophages. Such exudate gives gray color to the affected lobe. The congestion of capillaries is now uh, much reduced. In a clinic, coughing is not so marked and less productive. Pain and high fever persist. Resolution. The inflammatory process subsides and the lung returns to norm apart from the pleura, where the fibrinose adhesions between the visceral and parietal layers tend to undergo organization. Strands of fibrin are breaked up and disappeared. Blood circulation in alveolar capillaries is uh, improved. Polymorphs are diminished in number. Exudate contents may be removed by three ways. Via lymphatics, by macrophage, through uh, bronchi, by uh, cuffed up sputum. The disease usually uh, ends with uh, sudden dropping temperature, so cold crisis. Before the antibiotic period, death uh, was common, result of the lobar pneumonia. There may be the following complications which can be manifested in lungs and other organs. Lung abscess occurs due to excess activity of polymorphs and macrophages with formation of pus. Carnification. Carno in Latin for flesh. May happen uh, when phagocytic activity of polymorphs and macrophages is failed, and fibrous strands in alveoli may not be liquefied and replaced by granulation and sclerotic tissue. Smooth muscle uh, fibers can also uh, be formed due to metaplasia. As a result, the affected lobe uh, becomes solid flesh like. Impyma of pleura may appear due to uh, superadding of purulent inflammation to a uh, fibrous process of visceral pleura overlying the affected lobe. Uh, purulent serositis as pericarditis and peritonitis may occur, meningitis, then purulent arthritis, uh, then septicemia or sepsis, generation of infection. Nowadays, the classical manifestation of lobar pneumonia is rare due to patomorphosis. Interstitial pneumonia, otherwise acute pneumonitis, is a rare condition. The disorder is characterized by diffuse involvement of the pulmonary interstitium uh, to inflammation process, and especially in the alveolar wall. Usually, interstitial pneumonia is caused by um, viruses, putrefactive bacteria, fungi, mycoplasma, uh, pneumatis, chlamydia maybe. Pneumocystic pneumonia occur in individuals with weakened immune systems due to uh, cancer, AIDS, uh, organ transplantation. Activation of pulmonary macrophage is a key element in the pathogenesis of the interstitial uh, fibrosis. Furthermore, damage to the alveolar epithelium and the interstitial uh, vasculature, leading to hypoxia with progression, and individuals can develop respiratory failure, often in association with pulmonary hypertension and corpus manale. According to localization, there are three forms of interstitial pneumonia. First, peribronchial interstitial pneumonia, usually caused by viruses, originated from bronchi. Uh, interlobular interstitial pneumonia is uh, caused due to distribution of the infection from alveoli, visceral pleura, and mediastinum, usually caused by putrefactive bacteria in the subpleural uh, regions and uh, along the interlobular septum. 
Intralvular interstitial pneumonia, the earliest common manifestation of the most interstitial diseases. Uh, this is alveolitis, that is accumulation of inflammatory and immune effector cells within the alveolar walls and spaces. Microscopically, the lymphocytes, macrophages, and neutrophils infiltrate the alveolar septa. Also, you can see the congestion of vessels. Chronic interstitial lung disease. Diffuse and chronic involvement of the interstitium in the alveolar walls are defined as diffuse interstitial lung diseases. Persistence of the injurious agents leads to parenchymal injury, proliferation of fibroblasts, and progressive interstitial fibrosis. In this slide, you can see different investigation techniques of uh, pulmonary disease. At the end of the lecture, I recommend you to read in your textbook all um, details of the disease processes. Thank you for attention.